<laughs> Good morning, church. Pastor Kathy here with some special help. Good morning. <laughs> and we wanted to come to you today with worship from the lakeshore or the water's edge. We're down here at Cooper's Causeway this morning. And just wanted to share with you the good news and break bread together. Uh, I brought my communion elements and we wouldn't be here without the coffee. So, <laughs> um, friends, while you're uh, watching this, if you want to click over to our website, StoughtonUMC10.org forward slash giving, you can leave your offering. Uh, you can uh, drop us a line, drop us an email. Let us know that you were here this morning. Uh, we are so grateful for your continued generosity for our church. Um, this week we celebrated some of that generosity uh, with the new parking lot. If you haven't seen it yet, drive by. It looks beautiful. I encourage you to stop over uh, for our coffee hour following this service. Uh, the website went out in your email. It would be fun to visit and see all of you uh, following this time this morning. And that said, I did mention communion. If you have it, have communion elements ready to go this morning. You can have wine, I won't tell. Um, and you don't have to use any, any fancy uh, dishes or anything. These are, this is my dinner plate. This is a wine glass and they're both plastic. So you don't have to use anything fancy to have the elements ready this morning. I do invite you, uh, this week on Thursday, we are starting a new book study. Uh, it is called Signs of Life. The author is Stephanie Lobdo. Um, all are welcome. This book study should be pretty incredible. I'm really excited about that. And if you haven't yet, Saturday mornings, 9 a.m., we are hosting a Connect and Reflect time. Uh, this is a live worship over a Zoom call. Uh, we pray together, we fellowship, and we even have some small group time um, just to share prayer requests together. So I always encourage you to check out our website, Facebook, call the office, anything you can to keep connected to your church in this time of crisis. Um, I think that's all my announcements this morning. The I want to mention this is our last Sunday of our sermon series, Turning the Ordinary into the Extraordinary. I can hear uh, some geese behind me here. <laughs> oh, part of the fun here being by the river. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful, a beautiful service today. So I invite you now to pause, center yourself, and hear Deb as she plays these words, uh, here I am to worship. Good morning. Thanks, Deb, for that prelude this morning. These last few weeks, we have been sharing about symbols of our faith that we see and use in our ordinary lives. In the first week of the series, we talked about the basin and the towel. 
Jesus used these tools to offer avenues of grace for all God's people. Last week, we shared candles can light a fire of love and life in our faith lives. This morning, we look at the bread and cup, symbols used in Holy Communion. Traditionally, these symbols are used as the remembrance of the Last Supper, where Jesus used the basin, towel for his disciples' feet. Today, we break bread at the water's edge. The image of bread is used throughout all scripture as a symbol for Jesus. Today, bread represents abundance and sustenance. In short, it represents life. This truth for water too. Water is life-giving and powerful. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, calls himself both the living water and the bread of life. When we enjoy the water's edge and when we break bread together, we are participating in long-held traditions that celebrate Jesus, who he was, is, and will be. Through these acts, the ordinary moments, such as meal times or quiet times in reflection, become holy and sacred times. These are moments where the veil between heaven and earth is the, is the thinnest. These are the moments when the ordinary becomes the extraordinary. Let us pray. Jesus, you meet us at the water's edge of our ordinary lives. You accept us lovingly. You encourage us. You invite us to abundance. Nourished by the food of your word, warmed by the fire of your unfailing love, we may, may we in turn nourish, heal, and love those we meet today. Amen. Please join in this, please join in singing our opening hymn today. The lyrics should be on your screen. The song is, Lord, you have come to the lakeshore.
That, friends, is one of my most favorite hymns of all time. I have been singing the Spanish version um, of that. If you look in our hymnal, there's some wonderful words that go along with that. So thank you, Dina and Deb, for singing with me um, on that opening hymn. And thank you, church, if you sang along with that. Um, in our church, we have a tradition of offering prayer requests and praises and things that are on our hearts on a Sunday morning. We're not together in person, but we can still offer those prayers and praises. If you have a prayer request any time during the week, I encourage you to email it, call the office. You can email it to prayer at stoughtonumc10.org. Um, so we want to uh, name a few prayer requests this morning. We want to lift up Julia and Don LaFuse. Julia was in Meritor this week with some heart issues, and of course with this health crisis, she is there by herself. Uh, so we want to keep Julia in our prayers. Don, he's been battling with some back pain, so we want to keep Don in our prayers this morning too. On Friday, I was able to take some of our May Day flowers, I hope some of you got yours, uh, out to some of our church family who live out of, out of the city. And I got to see Pam Schultz. Uh, Pam looks great. She is in the process of moving to Stoughton. Um, so I asked for prayers for her transition. She seemed pretty excited about her move. Um, and we also want to just continue to pray for those who are serving in various capacities, various frontline capacities in this time, uh, in this health crisis time. With those prayer requests, friends, let's enter into a time of silent prayer. I will lead the pastoral prayer, and then we will share in the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. God Almighty, it is a privilege to come to you in prayer. We recognize always that you are our great creator, our great redeemer, our sustainer, and our friend. And as we sit outside this morning, on this early morning, similar to that morning where Jesus was at the beach, we are especially in awe as we watch the sunrise, as we hear your creation wake up. And God, we pray this morning, we pray seeking your forgiveness. God, we know a lot of times we try to do things on our own and we forget that we need you. We forget that we have your strength to guide us and to lead us. And God, we ask now in this time, God, truly forgive us for that. We don't mean to. We don't want to turn our backs on you. We are human. And God, we give you thanks that in our confession, in our sins, God, that you don't leave us, you don't abandon us. God, thank you for the abundant blessings in our lives, for these days of health and strength. God, thank you for these days of joy and celebration, of peace and, oh, God, of your great love. And God, we ask for our, your blessings and your spirit to be with us and we named in our prayer requests and those that we named in our hearts. God, we know that you can do so much more than our minds can even fathom. And God, as one body now in Christ, we pray together the Lord's Prayer in our own words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, the scripture reading this morning is from John 21, 1 through 14. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and the two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the sh shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Then the disciples, who Jesus, then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped out his, he wrapped out his, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they, landed, when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with the fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, look, Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. These are the words of God for, these are the words of God for God's people. And now, if you will, you can join with the anthem. There is a river in Judea.
is a, one of my favorite choir anthems. Um, I actually have never sung that until coming to this church, and I know it is a favorite of our choir. Um, so thank you, choir, for that gift this morning. Friends, let's offer a word of prayer. God, may the words of my mouth and the spirit of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. These last two Sundays have been about some symbols in our faith lives that we have at home. When we tap into the power of these symbols, the ordinary becomes the extraordinary. We wrap up our series today looking at bread, looking at the cup, and looking at the water's edge. This is a favorite spot of mine here in Stoughton. If I need to kill a few minutes, you know, before meeting or running errands, you will often find my car here. There is something extraordinary about the flowing water, the sounds of nature, and the view of God's creation before me within our city. Now, if you know me at all, you know water is big in my life. It's a symbol for me of home. I grew up on Lake Michigan. It's a symbol of life. Uh, baptism is a vital part of my understanding of faith. It's a symbol of death. I have seen the destruction and the power of water. And water is used in everyday life, in my everyday life, to quench my thirst, to clean my clothes, to when I shower, to make the coffee. When I think of the story of Jesus by the water, I can picture it happening on a morning like this one. It isn't warm out here, I'm telling you. It's actually kind of cold. <laughs> right, Ricky? It's a cool <laughs> <laughs> it is a, It's a cold, um, usually it's a foggy morning if you're out here early enough. And it is noisy with God's creation waking up. This post-resurrection story is one that I imagine where Jesus, he is seeking solace. I, he had been appearing to his beloved people and he's showing them the truth of the gospel. And he, I imagine him seeking a moment of quiet. He finds himself at the water's edge, at the sea. And he is fully aware of the opportunity that is before him to confirm the faith of his followers once again. This story, just like our sermon series, is full of symbolism that confirms their faith as well as our own. Yes, he really was resurrected. Yes, we really need him in our lives. Yes, the ministry of Jesus is for all the, quote, fish in the sea. This passage is a living parable. It is a story. It is uh, one of my favorite shows, uh, The Golden Girls. It is, as Sophia Petrillo would say, picture it, Sea of Tiberias, Jesus time. In the post-resurrection stories we, uh, that we hear often, Jesus, he is not quickly recognized. The people don't realize it's him until some significant act, like breaking bread. And I think this is important and, and to know and to hold in our hearts because... I believe it shows our dependence on Jesus. This story, it begins with the guys out fishing and they're not having any luck. Jesus said that his disciples, that they would be fishers of men. And after his death, I, well, they still struggled with this good news of this resurrectionist truth. And thus they were still struggling with the mission that Jesus gave them. It was only after they let go of control and that only after they put their trust in someone other than themselves that they became successful. Jesus called out to them from the shoreline, probably a foggy distance away, and they responded. Symbolically, this, this is a vital message for us. I know it is hard to see the ordinary in the ex or the extraordinary in the ordinary. It is hard to look at a plastic cup and plate, for example, and see them as vessels for the body of Christ. 
It is hard to see a bowl and a towel and see them as tools of grace. It is hard to see a candle and see it as a symbolic movement of the Holy Spirit. As we go about our days, it's almost, it's almost as if we are in the boat with the fishermen trying to do our jobs, trying to do what is necessary for our families and our health. And when we struggle, we often struggle even more when we try to solve our problems on our own. Friends, this morning, hear me, hear these words. Faith calls us to peer out of the boat. Faith calls us to listen to the still small voice in the mist, giving us direction and hope. Faith calls us to get beyond ourselves, to trust that which we know in our core, in our hearts, as truth. This morning, as we break bread by the water's edge, we have no need to question it. Jesus is with us. As the disciples came ashore hauling in their big catch, they had every confidence that it was Jesus with them. They were blessed time and time again by his amazing grace, and there was no doubt that his message of heaven, love and grace, that it was for all people. There's a symbolism in the number of fish that, that were caught that reflects the missional success of those who follow Jesus. You follow Jesus, you catch a lot of fish. There is a symbolism, too, in the breaking of bread with Christ, in remembrance of his sacrifice, but also in celebration of ministry and their hard work. Friends, I invite you to join Ricky and I here by the water symbolically. I invite you to take your bread and your cup and envision Jesus with you at your table. He is the voice calling you beyond yourself. He is the voice saying, friends, fish over here and I will provide. He is the voice calling you to a life of trust. He is the voice calling you to a little excitement. As Peter showed uh, with him uh, jumping in the water saying, it is the Lord. Friends, let us pray. Living God, as we sit in the boat, we wonder where the fish are. We know we're called to the mission field, even though these days we can't go out into it. It seems that we're surrounded by the morning fog on the water. It feels like it. Yet, God, we, in our hearts, we know that you call out to us. Go here, fish here, reach out here, connect here. God, as we have learned these last few weeks, these ordinary symbols in our lives are extraordinary with you. You call out to us in the small voice, through the flicker of a candle flame, in the running of the water. And today, as we celebrate a meal together, we hear you calling out to us once again to remember, to celebrate, and to lean on you when the times are tough. With the breaking of the bread and the giving of the cup by the water's edge, we pray as that boat rocks. Amen. Friends, I hope you have your communion elements ready to go. Uh, practicing our social distancing, at least trying to here, um, while also offering a moment of grace. Uh, we have our own individual cups. We'll share bread together. And as you break bread today, know that you are doing so with, with your church family, wherever we may be gathered, whenever we may be gathered. You can join me in the communion liturgy. It is printed in your bulletin uh, that you received in your email. Um, it might be on the screen if, if I can get the technology to work. Friends, as we come to the table of the water's edge, partaking of God's heavenly feast, let us prepare our hearts anew to be in communion with Christ, communion with one another, and with the risen Christ. We, we come, come ready, ready to, to partake, partake of the bread, bread and cup ready to commune with one another with the living God. 
Gracious God, we give you give thanks that through Christ we live in your favor. We give thanks that through Christ we come to the table of grace, partaking heavenly food and the gift of salvation. Like the great company of witnesses who come to this table before us, we are filled with gratitude and joy for your many blessings. We come before you in praise and thanksgiving as we commit ourselves again as members of the living body of Christ. Let us pray. God, as we break this bread and witness your grace revealed to us, we pray for your spirit to flow among us, connecting us as one body in your Son, Jesus. We pray for your spirit to turn these ordinary things, these ordinary spaces, into sacred gifts. Pour out your spirit on us and on these gifts, making them be for us a reminder of your never-ending, life-giving love. May this meal inspire us always to unite your world for good by your direction. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you, for you, for all of us. And the blood of Christ, cup of salvation, we rejoice and give thanks. Ricky, the body of Christ given for you and for me. And the blood of Christ shed for us all. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this simple meal in this sacred place. Thank you, God, for these ordinary gifts of bread and cup turned extraordinary by the power of your love. As we come to the water's edge, wherever that may be, we feel the nourishment of your grace. May we be empowered today and always to share your love with all that we do and say. Amen. Amen. I invite us now to sing together our closing song today in celebration of communion together, One Bread, One Body, with Ken and Pat Critton. One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, the many, throughout the earth, we are one body in the one Lord. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, the many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Many the gifts, many the works, one in the Lord of all, one bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, the many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Great for 
o'er the fields, scattered and grown, gathered to one for all, one bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless. And we, the many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. I don't know if you heard it at the end of that communion prayer, uh, the geese behind us got really noisy, and I'm wondering if they wanted part of communion with us. <laughs> Oh, friends, this morning, wherever you are, I hope and pray that you have been able to be, well, that you have been blessed by this holy time. We certainly have been. Um, if you get a chance to, stop down here to Cooper's Causeway. Um, well, definitely stop over to our coffee hour after this time uh, to connect together. But stop down here to Cooper's Causeway if you haven't. It is just beautiful all the time. And now for our benediction this morning. Friends, faith calls us to peer out of the boat. Faith calls us to listen to the still small voice in the mist, giving us direction and hope. Faith calls us to get beyond ourselves, to trust that which we know in our core, in our hearts as truth. Let's have extraordinary faith this week. Amen. Amen. Amen.